Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Richard Ayuadi. In the news this week, in Westminster, there's joy for Michael Gove as he's finally given a cabinet role that suits his abilities while still challenging him. Would you, would you like a cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> in the White House gym, Donald Trump's cheerleading team rehearsed their new display entitled Make America Great Again. And in Kansas, it's a challenging first day at work for the new presenter of American Spring Watch. Yep, another one. <laughs> oh, <Emma. laughs> <laughs> 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 first monkey was looking at saying, not now, surely. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is the assistant editor of The Spectator who says that rather than be constantly devoted to a party, a political journalist should be fundamentally disloyal a theory which suggests Boris Johnson will always be a journalist at heart. <laughs> Please welcome Isabel Hardman. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is a comedian and author who last weekend delighted the crowd at Cheltenham, not the literary festival, he romped home on a 40 to 1 outsider. <laughs> Please welcome Andy Hamilton. And we start with the biggest stories of the week. Ian and Isabel, take a look at this. <laughs> the current Prime Minister. Yes, she's still in. That's a negotiation, civilised discourse. Is that Boris? <laughs> no, he's still locked outside. Oh, is he actually locked out? And that's a live feed of the Tory WhatsApp group. <laughs> this is your area. What's happening? Well, it's the next episode of the demise of Theresa May, who's gone from being the Iron Lady to a sort of flatter version, like the Iron Lady, instead. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing is happening. There was a big coup, we thought we were going to get, you know, a new Prime Minister, but no. It's a bit like a very dull, slow Attenborough, isn't it? <laughs> Where the same wounded wildebeest... <laughs> ..just keeps limping across the plain. And the hyenas can't quite get organised enough to kill her off. <laughs> What, what it is now. Yes, it's about the week of plotting and infighting in the Tory party. Mm. There was speculation this week that Theresa might demote Boris Johnson in a reshuffle. Why might that not work? He said he won't be demoted. Th that's absolutely right. According to The Telegraph, allies of Boris warned that if May tried to demote him, he would just say no. <laughs> we learnt more about the principal stance Boris Johnson took when he decided to back Brexit last year. What was that? Well, he confessed to someone that he changed his mind and became a, a lever just to annoy Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> He confessed it in an interview. Yes, yes, he... he um, well, according to the mail, so... Oh. Do you call that an interview? <laughs> Can we edit that bit out so people <laughs> believe it? Yeah. <laughs> well, according to a reputable paper... <laughs> Can we edit that bit out yeah. as well? <laughs> It was to Lord Adonis. Lord Adonis. Can you imagine being called Lord Adonis? Hey. It's quite a lot to live up to in the morning. <laughs> Lord Adonis. <laughs> that's, my, that's my safe word. <laughs> um, no, I'm joking. You're, you're never safe with me. <laughs> um, responding. Yes, yeah, so responding to Lord Adonis' statement that Remain was the right option, Boris apparently responded, Yes, but I'm not sure I can bear the thought of backing Cameron. Adonis replied, I should have thought there might be a higher purpose at stake. What higher purpose is there than spite? <laughs> Why the hell did Theresa May invite, well, both Johnson and Gove into the Cabinet? Was that the sort of LBJ principle of, you know, it's better to have them inside the tent pissing out than outside the tent pissing in? Because cos she's ended up with them both inside the tent pissing on her, basically. <laughs> What advice did Michael Heseltine offer made regarding what she should do about Boris? Sack him. Yes, that, that's certainly in the territory, but we, we actually have a clip of this. Okay. Let, let's enjoy some brave clothing choices. <laughs> where would you put Boris if you were in Theresa May's position and you were going to reshuffle? Where would you put Boris Johnson? Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> They don't make patricians like that anymore. <laughs> he matches his plant in that clip. Of course. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes, this is not his first rodeo. 
who else was a bit unpatriotic this week and failed to show full enthusiasm for Theresa May's Brexit vision? Well, Boris was late for her speech in the Commons. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he'd been. He seemed in a hurry, a bit out of breath. Um... <laughs> I don't think any of us are enthusiastic about her Brexit vision. How dare you! <laughs> Talking the country down. Okay. Who, who, who was this? Was it Damien Green? Her it was, deputy? Well, no, it was herself. <laughs> she was asked if she would vote to leave the EU if there was another referendum. Let's have a look. If there was a Brexit vote now, would you vote Brexit? Because you, you voted r remain in the referendum. Have you changed your mind? Well, I... I, I don't answer hypothetical questions, but what I what it's I have... It's a pretty easy answer. I, I would I, be able to answer that. I, I know I would vote in exactly the same way. But, so you can't but, tell me that you would now vote leave in a referendum. I, because I think, Ian, what I did last time round was I looked at everything and came to a, ju a judgement, and I'd do exactly the same this time round. But we're not having another referendum. She, she, really, <laughs> she really needs to work on her thinking face there. <laughs> Some of those expressions are readable. <laughs> um, she said there that she doesn't answer hypothetical questions. What happened next? People got cross. She answered one. Yes. That's right. She then answered a hypothetical question with this ribald riposte. If you were stuck on a desert island, which one of your cabinet colleagues would you most like to have keep you company? <laughs> Note I didn't say which one you wouldn't like to have to keep you company. <laughs> No, that's a very... Now, this is going to be one of those terrible uh, questions. But you know what? The name that first went through my mind, and maybe it's just because I've had a bad cough, is perhaps Dr Liam Fox would be very practical. <laughs> wow, she found that funny. <laughs> I think she was just relieved that it wasn't about Brexit, I suppose. Yeah. And it's another way of buying time, isn't it? It's like coughing. Yeah. And the idea of being on a desert island on her own with Liam Fox seemed to me, uh, to her, a remarkably <laughs> good, positive outcome as compared to what she's going through every day at the moment. <laughs> so you how miserable she must be. Yeah. Um, at Prime Minister's questions, Jeremy Corbyn avoided asking Theresa May about her inability to say which way she'd vote now. Um, but one thing Corbyn did ask May prompted a zinger of response. Planet Venezuela. Yes. Corbyn asked May, what planet are you living on? And within ten minutes, <laughs> that brain of hers fired back. The leader of the opposition asked me what planet I was on earlier. We all know what planet he and the Shadow Chancellor are on. Planet Venezuela. The problem with that joke is Venezuela is on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's the editor of Private yeah. Eye. <laughs> I knew there was a reason. Yeah. <laughs> The and logical Mex floor was just mm. staring at you. Yeah. <laughs> there was some good news for Theresa this week, though. An attempted coup by former party chairman and current laughingstock Grant Shapps was flushed out by party whips in the wake of the calamitous conference speech. It, it was angry people, and it was um, mainly men as well, which genuinely really upset a lot of female Tory MPs. Right. They, they just saw it as a bullying thing. But a lot of... Um, more thoughtful men who I spoke to after the coup was exposed were saying, you know, we don't want people to think that we're nasty men who are getting rid of a woman. We want them to think... We're just nasty men. It's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, a, with a broad brief. We need some nasty women, basically. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't just hate women. <laughs> it's, all, it's all sorts of people. <laughs> One MP said to me, this is just a lot of men waving their little willies around, which was just so upsetting. Yes, yeah. that they were doing that. Just, to, just <laughs> No, just thinking about it. OK, right. <laughs> yeah. Was it like synchronised swimming? Was it to a beat of music? <laughs> now, Chelmsford MP Vicky Ford pointed out how irrelevant uh, Shaps is, in her opinion. Let's have a look. I know Grant well, but I believe he's completely out of touch. He's not been talking to his colleagues. He's not even in our WhatsApp group. You know, we've all been talking to each other, chatting to each other. He's not even in the group. <laughs> he's not even in the group. He's well lame. <laughs> we don't even talk to him. If we saw him, we like we just put our hoods up and walk by. <laughs> this is the continued plotting against Theresa May following her disastrous conference speech last week. In an interview with the Sunday Times, the Prime Minister denied that it was the worst day of her life. And I also have every confidence that she can and will do much worse in increasingly surprising ways. 
Boris Johnson has tried to dismiss rumours of a coup against a Prime Minister. I'm fed up to the back teeth with being accused of plotting. He whispered to his friend Catesby as he rolled another barrel of gunpowder into Theresa May's basement. <laughs> Paul and Andy, mm. take a look at this. Right, uh, so she... Um, oh, gone black and white. That's Snub Pollard running out. And uh, <coughs> uh, that's uh, Roscoe Arbuckle pushing Buster Keaton. Uh, nudging, there was a, a guy who won the uh, Nobel Prize for Economics at the Nudge Theory. I'm not entirely sure what the Nudge Theory is. It's uh, this guy, Richard Thaler, mm -hmm. and he, he's um, seen as a pioneer of behavioural economics. Mm -hmm. And his theory is that um, you just have to kind of guide people sort of through almost subliminal suggestions towards pos positive outcomes. It does work, though. Yeah, one of my favourite... Um, bits of nudge theory is if you put a bee on a urinal, not a real bee, but sure. a picture of a bee, mm. apparently it makes men aim their pee better. Yeah, yeah. They've often used a fly. It's completely true. That um, helps with aim there. <laughs> I was genuinely considering wearing this uh, shirt tonight, <laughs> but I was just... I was afraid of all the urine <laughs> that it would inevitably attract. I went to a urinal in Japan and... Oh, you and your stories. <laughs> <laughs> More than once. More than once. <laughs> and it had a, a bullseye painted around the, the drain. What I think I don't quite grasp about that mm. is it, it sort of implies that it's all about male stupidity, that we don't know where to pee. I would put forward that the biggest problem with urinals is the uh, bouncy splashiness <laughs> of porcelain. <laughs> yeah, that's my contention. Because you don't just wave your willy around at random. <laughs> you do aim, but but it you know, drops sure. keep bouncing. <laughs> back. Just see the state of my trousers. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, that's the problem. Ideally, you're calling for more absorbent urinals. Sponge urinals, <laughs> okay. I think, would be. Yes. That would... <laughs> that's that's right. The bumped up focus group doesn't like that's it. That's right. <laughs> this is the shortest episode of Dragon's Den yet. <laughs> Organ donation is a nudge theory success. Yes, that's right. In other countries, if you say to people, would you like to give your organs, they go, no. And they, if you say, would you not like to give them on this bit of paper, and you say, oh, I can't be bothered to fill it in. <laughs> um, and so other countries have much better rates of organ donation, and we've decided we're going to join in. Mm -hmm. But with respect, how is that a theory? I mean, that's just common sense. Andy, how you're do... so down on these academics. <laughs> One fly in a urinal and you just hate the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... One fly in a urinal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not a theory, is it? It's just... If, it's just people are susceptible to suggestion and they're quite irrational. Given a lot of theories, that's not bad. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but they still haven't, you know, they fixed the urinal problem, apparently, but they haven't sorted out getting men to put the toilet seat down. I mean, what kind of insect can you use for that? <laughs> well, if what? you put something we could crush all around the rim, <laughs> we could... <laughs> yeah. Also, we have a new yeah. semicircular bus seat. There we go. Mm -hmm. And that's to what end? That's, so that's to allow you to face your assailant directly. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's actually about encouraging people to talk. Oh, How do you feel you might mug me? Oh, <laughs> that, would be, that would be lovely. I think that nudge theory is responsible for all those products that address you in the first person. What is termed wackaging, which is rapacious commercial brands trying to be your mates. Yeah. Um, take, for example, innocent smoothies and then knitted woolly hats. Jamiroquai's formed a band. <laughs> I'm against capital punishment, but I bring it back for the market. What, what, for the smoothie? For the, for the marketing people. But they're innocent. Look, they're telling you. <laughs> <laughs> um, which brand attempts to make women buy more soap stirred up a race row recently? Dove soap. That's right. Yes, it was about the um, black woman washing and becoming white. Yeah, and why on earth would people be offended by that? <laughs> Seemed to suggest that being black wasn't as good as being white. That's true. <laughs> that's, that's what it says on the card. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, actually yeah, yeah. It, it, it actually is true. Yeah. Um, that's direct from the nudge unit. They actually <laughs> looked into it. Apparently, <laughs> still better. Still better being white people. Um, so well done. Well done to everyone. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's one of the few few times I can make everyone feel uncomfortable at once. <laughs> Norm normally, it's just my wife. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so, yes, the Dove ad, the shortened version showed that, um, but the full ad continued to show the white woman turning into an Asian woman. That's an abrasive T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what are they trying to address, exactly? Is it that people of different races are frightened of trying their soap? I mean, does this soap work on Maybe. all races? There's not what a brand called Ku Klux Klan soap, is there? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think you can get some bed linen, but there's no... There's no... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is the Nobel Prize for Economics awarded to Richard Thaler, the man who invented the nudge theory. A practical application of nudge technique was used in North Carolina where teenage girls were awarded with a dollar for each day they were not pregnant. <laughs> a similar scheme in Middlesbrough netted one lucky girl £2.63. <laughs> Good time now for round two, the strengthometer of news, which allows me to uncoil my muscle. Fingers on buzzers, teams. Yes. Here's the first one. This is Ian a picture Israel. by Gainsborough. Yes. Mm. And it's a famous picture of supposedly Mr and Mrs Andrews. Mm -hmm. And everyone thought it was an ordinary picture of a well-to-do couple. But, in fact, Gainsborough fell out with them and he's put all sorts of jokes in the picture, oh. mostly of a phallic kind. I mean, he put, even in the background, their two donkeys pen together, suggesting this was going to be an unhappy marriage. Let's see the donkeys there. Well, if, if surely, if he was really angry, he'd have put them much closer. <laughs> <laughs> if he was really angry, he'd put the donkeys on the bench and those two would be yes. in the background. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be a bit of a giveaway, though. Yeah. I think he was, he was trying to be subtly he, revenging. He still wanted the oh. money. Yeah. He still wanted the money. According to The Sun, Gainsborough is making the suggestion that his former pals were donkeys. <laughs> I, I just love the idea that The Sun is now the paper of artistic record. Yeah. <laughs> it always has been. Yeah. Uh, page five is always a Gainsborough story. <laughs> the Sun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is this not reading quite a lot into what is basically a painting? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I haven't got oh, glasses. Andy, the whole of academia is not good enough for you. <laughs> now painting's boring. Well, I'm, I haven't what got is my... it, urinals only? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got my glasses with me, but I can't... I'm, I'm looking quite hard. I can't see a penis anywhere. Well... <laughs> can, you, can you honestly... We're still talking about the painting, are <laughs> yeah. we? Okay. Can you honestly see Well, a... what strikes me is that they must be brother and sister, unless he wasn't very good at faces. <laughs> <laughs> they look identical they to do. me. There is another close-up we can see, dangling around Mr Andrew's waist. There. The filthy-minded art historian. <laughs> has somehow interpreted that as a shot and powder bag in the distinct form of male genitalia. Can we oh. see it again? Cos I'm worried there's something wrong with me. Can we...? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's got a tassel? Yes. <laughs> what, what? Every, every man has a tassel, Andy. <laughs> I knew it. I Isn't knew it? I was different. <laughs> Damn. This is the claim that Thomas Gainsborough hid phallic symbols in his most famous painting. One art historian claims that Gainsborough painted this secret phallus. <laughs> I like the way the eye follows you around the room. <laughs> next one. Yes. There's a recipe that Margaret Thatcher came up with in the 1970s for some sort of pudding or something, which is... Uh, people have tried to make it and it's absolutely horrible. You're it, right, only it is not a pudding. It's a starter. It, it is a starter. It's a starter. It's a tasty-sounding dish. Maggie liked to whip up, made from jellied beef stock, cream cheese and curry powder, topped with a black olive. <laughs> that sounds awful. Pretty nice. I would have thought she would have used quite a lot of milk in any of her recipes. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to see what Sky News anchor Kay Burley thought of it? Oh, yes, absolutely. Of course yes. you do. Yeah. Here always. she is. Mm. It is so raw. <laughs> It's really horrible. <laughs> I actually tried to make it as nice as possible. It's quite difficult. Oh, it's chef, really horrible. To make such an awful combination of flavours. <laughs> Apparently, the recipe played havoc with the digestive system. In fact, it was while hammering on the door of the number 10 loo that Dennis first shouted the immortal words, Maggie, 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 out, out, out. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers again. Okay. That's yes. Donald Trump. He's coming to Britain on a... Uh, unfortunately, the Queen can't see him. She's getting the corgis dewormed that weekend. 
Yeah. She, uh, but he's going to come. Uh, he's going to come on a working visit, and uh, he wanted to go on a carriage ride up the Mall and play golf at Balmoral. Is there mm. a golf course at Balmoral? I don't think. I just so. have to dig one. Mm. Um, <laughs> but anyway, he's only going to come right. on a on a working visit to discuss. Mm key global issues mm. that he doesn't understand. Yes. Mm. <laughs> what might the reason have been for downgrading Trump's visit? He's a moron. <laughs> They're worried about protesters, I think. Yes. I mean, I think the implication is that he said to them that he wasn't coming if people were going to protest. So um, you either have to arrest very large numbers of people, say about 60 million, <laughs> or have him secretly bust in undercover. He keeps boasting about his IQ, but he won't sort of tell us what his IQ score is. Because that man Tillerson called him a moron. Yeah, well, that's, that's half of what he called he him. He called yeah. him a... <laughs> yeah. This and is that, your Secretary of State. That's his Secretary of State, after yeah. they had a meeting in July where he didn't seem to grasp any detail at all. And uh, so they've got sort of, like, adult supervision at the moment <laughs> in the White House. Well, whatever his IQ is, it, given... I mean, he lives in Trump world. So the IQ would be, you know, a He's... very big number, one of the biggest numbers oh. ever. <laughs> a huge number, like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> That's what it will be. It's over ten. You're being very generous. It's like... <laughs> That's if he was allowed to take it five times. <laughs> He's already tweeting, sad to see the failing private eye. <laughs> <laughs> Fake news. By, by the failed Ian Hislop. Yeah. <laughs> he begged me for a job. <laughs> well, we all know that the best thing about Trump is that he is incredibly humble. Yes. Let's have a look. You're not known to be a humble man, but I wonder... I think I am actually humble. I think I'm much more humble than you would understand. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Just look at... Look at Mike Pence's face. He's thinking, what? What did he just say? <laughs> just have a heart attack so I can get the job. <laughs> Talking of sexual predators... <laughs> let's mention another. Who has had a welcome fall from grace this week? It's Harvey Weinstein, who right. uh, has um, announced that he's going, uh, he's going to get counselling because, obviously, it's a new trend. The perpetrator goes for the counselling to get over the trauma of, of being, being the perpetrator. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and he said that uh, he needs time uh, to conquer his demons, because it was the demons that, that made him do all the bad stuff. It's only rich people who have demons. Have you noticed? Only rich people have demons. Poor people go to prison. Uh, yes. This is Harvey Weinstein, the disgraced Hollywood mogul. Um, over 30 women have now come forward to accuse Harvey Weinstein of sexual assault and intimidating sexual advances. He has fled to a sex addiction clinic. He's been disowned. Yes. By everyone, all the people who used to like him. A very, very, um, I found moving condemnation from the Clintons mm. um, about, you know, abuse of um, power by a, a very, very rich, powerful <laughs> man. Trying to force his attentions on a young woman, you know, who promising her a career. I found that very, very touching. Mm. Yes. Um, <laughs> and not only touching, but late. <laughs> and um, unconvincing. But he is going to a sex addiction clinic, although what it seems that he's addicted to is disregarding people's lack of consent. <laughs> um, it's like someone who goes around punching people and then claiming they're addicted to boxing. <laughs> And, of course, the other person who condemned him was, you know, the President of the United States, who himself, you know, knows about um, relationships with young women. Mm. Yes. He sets such a good example, He does. He? And it would feminist. be fake news to suggest that was a disgraceful act of hypocrisy. Mm. Of course. And it's very really good that... A really big act of hypocrisy. <laughs> Huge. This is Donald Trump's trip to the UK next year. It was originally intended as a state visit, but it emerged this week that diplomats are planning a stripped-down trip. No one wants to see that. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, oh, which this week features, as its guest publication, Pylon of the Month. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the content is quite shocking, but mm. I always <laughs> like to cheer myself uh, by flipping straight to page three for a photo of a sizzling bird. <laughs> and we start with what performs mating dance for human woman? <laughs> 
Is this Boris? <laughs> it must be an android. Or, but it was an animal, wasn't it? Like a butterfly or a caterpillar. Oh, it was an animal. An it ostrich. Wasn't, it, it wasn't an ostrich. Genus. Emu. Close. Rod Hull. No. <laughs> pigeon. Tit. Yes. An amorous pigeon <laughs> is the answer. He's ambitious, isn't he? <laughs> yes. A woman in Brisbane has filmed herself being courted by a pigeon performing a mating dance. <laughs> Later, the pigeon was consumed with passion and a side salad. <laughs> Next, Flash Bristow thinks what will make Britain a duller place. Who's Flash Bristow? Well, Who's Flash Bristow? You come on. <laughs> Get with the pylon programme. Yeah. The answer is the new T pylons. Ah, right. In the pylon spotting community, oh, and yeah. it is a community, I'd assume the name Flash is a nickname you'd only receive posthumously. <laughs> <laughs> Next, what found hidden under doormat? Floor! <laughs> pylon magazine. If only. <laughs> no. Two foot parcel. Ah! Marks and Spencer was criticised for how their delivery driver attempted to hide the package. See if you can spot it. <laughs> and finally, what? The next hot beauty trend everyone needs to try. Stretching out your top lip and using it as a bathing cap. <laughs> oh, tongue splitting. What? <laughs> well, that seems right. I read, right. I read about it. People are now getting their tongues cut. Yeah. So that they can do snake impressions at parties. Yeah. So they have a yeah. completely forked tongue. Yeah. That's a high price to pay for a party trick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought all politicians had that anyway. <laughs> well, the answer is actually nose hair extensions. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. No, it is. And if you still need convincing, here's how good it looks. It could be two spiders screaming. <laughs> Beauty blogger Sophie Hannah Richardson was one of the first to decorate her nostrils with fake eyelashes. She later experimented with sticking a long line of them all the way down her spine, which obviously created a huge backlash. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are Ian and Isabel have four, Paul and Andy have five. Oh. Well done, um, And I leave you with news that after making millions from fighting Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor is again accused of bringing the noble art of boxing into disrepute as his next opponent is revealed. <laughs> Keen to show his wife and children that his drinking problems are behind him, Wayne Rooney moves back into the family home. <laughs> and in Berlin, as Donald Trump bends over to tie his shoelaces, Angela Merkel decides to seize the moment. <laughs> Good night. Now, time to party. A new prison officer sheds her inhibitions, and it was the cake what did it. Porridge next, then glam it up with Graham's guests. A first for Jane Fonda, and she's in good company. 10.35 here on BBC One. <laughs>